My level's good, my level's good. My level's good. She love my baby girl, a mess. She's gonna bring me coming home. Rather be alone. You good, the level's good. Mic check, mic check. Self delights. You know, I got that smooth dub skin. I need my. Needed the glow, you feel me? Feel me, baby? Can't be looking out here all scuffy and nasty and uh, rough and rugged. You know what I'm saying? Cleanliness is next to godliness. You don't want to look rougher. You want to be rough and rugged from within. You know, with all the shits. You know what I'm saying? If need be. But you don't want to look and appear that way. Can't ever really. I never really got with the grimy face looking. Uh, why you gotta look like you? You know what I'm saying? Those be the ones that really ain't about shit at all. All that yo stuff they, they put on the act, man. It's too much acting. <laughs> too much acting. We don't do no acting on the fact though, show. We just dealing facts, right? It's fact though. <laughs> okay. Welcome, welcome. I like to welcome all my real ones to the fact though, show. I'm your host, Notorious A.V.E., Troy Ave. Um, I just want to say God is great in the paper straight. I felt like I felt like uh, serenading y'all with a little bit of... Tell me who who this is. Let me see if I know who this is. I should have left my baby girl a message saying I wouldn't be coming home. I'd rather be alone. That's with no auto-tune either. There's no auto-tune on this mic. This is just all me in the flesh, baby. You know what I mean? Okay, and this is the fact though, show y'all. Um, consistency is the key to success. Everybody know that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I hope everybody had a blessed week. You know what I mean? I really mean it. If you're listening to the sound of my voice, I hope you had a blessed week. Um, I'm trying to get a good schedule on these. Y'all gotta tell me, like I said, we probably start dropping the fact though show every Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. Whatever the people say, man, because you know this show's for the people, by the people. You know what I mean? Um, I want to get right into it. I'm feeling real comfy. I got on slippers. I was debating whether I wanted to wear white socks with my slippers. I'm a little bit weird sometimes where if I'm going to bed, I got to wear a white t-shirt. I can't wear a black t-shirt to bed. It just just feels weird. I feel like black t-shirts are for the night if you're going out to a club and you want your diamonds to hit extra, you throw them over your black shit. But like a black t-shirt and just feels weird. Black wife beaters too, man. I always felt like those were for, for got to be a special type of, special type of savage to wear a black wife beater. You feel me? That's kind of nuts. I'm a white wife beater. The gray wife beater is nasty too. Real nasty work. Got a trailer park feel to it. Got a, if you wear gray wife beaters, you probably tuck your wife beater in your jaws. You feel me? Disgusting. Which is perfect for our first topic. I was singing because I was um I was in a vibe. I was in a good vibe, man. You know what I'm saying? I wanna before we get to our first topic, I just wanna say, you know what? I feel like today is National Good Woman Appreciation Day. If you got a good woman, um, you show you appreciate her. You feel me? Like just just do something special for her. You probably over already do special things, but you know, women, the things we do for them is like a pacifier sometimes. It's just temporarily. You feel me? It's a fact, though. Do something special for, um, like a, a good woman. They bring you peace of mind. Bring you peace of mind. You know, a bad woman is just gonna bring you stress and all kind of shit. And I struggle with myself. Like a lot of times, I'm quick to snip a bitch. Like I'm done. Three, two, one. That's it. You're done. I don't stick around and try to figure it out. And I'm not that type of person. You show me who you are and you give me a little bit of stress and headache. I know it can only get worse from here. Like, what's what's the likelihood of it getting better? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, if I I got my kid's mother, like, is like she's lucky I, I have kids with her because, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's a headache sometimes. She got, I can't friend, she got a pockets of being very good, which outweighs the headache. But sometimes the headache is just like, what? Three, two, one, that's it, you're done. Oh, fuck, I got these kids. Gotta be a dad. Can't be a deadbeat dad. Death to all dead. Not even death to all deadbeats. We gotta do something else. If you kill them, they really can't do nothing. Feel like all deadbeats should lose their social media. Shouldn't have none of that. 
Because you can't be out here tricking and trapping no more innocent, uh, unsuspecting, naive women into thinking you lit, nigga. And you got all the drip, nigga. And in reality, nigga, you fucking out like a, a 50 cent lighter, nigga. After, after a bag of cigarettes. He's just, can't get nothing out of this, motherfucker. He's, he's done. Straight up. So, um, yeah, I just want to appreciate all the good women. Just take time to tell y'all that y'all appreciate it. And, um, you know, um, I mean, me personally, I'm not going to do anything special for you personally. Like, you know, if we was here together, maybe I'd take you out of something. But, you know, that's for, that's for the nigga you fucking, baby. Let him do that. Feel me? I'm just going to tell you. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna spark they mind and tell them do something. All right, on to the on to the shit. I want to talk to y'all personally. I feel good. I'm back here with y'all. I was going crazy all week. You know what I'm saying? I was enjoying my life. That's a fact, though. Life got a lot of ups and downs, especially mine. So I like to enjoy the shit out of life whenever I can. I might shoot out to Atlantic City this weekend. I might bring my kids. I gotta figure out who I'm gonna bring them. Babysit him Cause you know When the roulette tables Lay It's time for your boy to play I'm the f- Number 5 That red 5 I'm betting that Number 3 And 22 23 You know all of those Are my numbers 33, 35 I got a lot of numbers Nevertheless Let me kick it with y'all About some personal shit man You probably been through this before Um So I'm kicking it with Uh One of my homegirls And uh she tells me about, you know, this bum-ass nigga, a.k.a. Uh, we'll call him her baby father. I couldn't think of another name. I couldn't think of another name. I won't disclose who the woman is, but yeah, baby father. So, this nigga's over here. She sends her son out there, you know, to go, you know, stay with his dad for the week or whatever. Because now the kids got virtual school. Which, virtual school is not that bad. I was doing virtual school with my kids earlier today. But you send them to virtual school. They doing a virtual school thing. It's cool. Um, she like, yeah, I stay with your dad. The dad lives out of town or whatever. Son ends up calling the mom about two a.m. Ma, so what's up? Is everything okay? That's what she says. He says, Ma, come get me. She says, come get you. What you? What, you, what, you, what happened? What you mean, come get you? Nah, yo, yo, just come get me. Nigga, what do you? Where's your father at? That's what she's saying. Yo, hold on. Yo. Long story long. R.P. Butch Lewis. Got that from him. Make a long story long. This bum ass nigga gets kicked out of the place that he's living. The place that he's living happens to be the home of his girlfriend. And this is why I stress having your motherfucking own. Period. It's unacceptable to be a fucking leech. It's unacceptable to live off a chick, to live off a homebody, none of that bullshit. Because at any given time, when motherfuckers uh, feel away, they kick you the fuck out on the street. You and your, your preteen son out on the street, that's nuts. <clears throat> Mom's got to come drive four hours to come get him, like that's nuts. Man, I really, really despise him. We're not going to say hate, we don't hate here. We don't hate, we're not, we're not, we're not a... Uh, we're not a community of hate here at the fact of shit. We got things we don't like, things we despise, we suck as shit, and we don't agree with. But we don't hate. But I really despise men who don't have their own, dog. Like, that's women. That's women shit. Women could, uh, mo- and you know, in, in all fairness, more women are likely to have their shit together than a guy. That's why most times, like, you see niggas, they don't really get their own crib they busy living with their mama the first time they move out they moving with a chick that don't count dog facts first time they get a car is they driving one of they yeah i got my little bitch car yeah i'm moving around nigga you're not a player you're a bum you driving your, your chick car or another one first time they get a, a motorcycle or actual car it's not even in their name yeah, my little bitch with the car, and then, they, and then they run up her credit because they never finished paying because they don't know no fucking responsibilities, and then that's it, they're done. Then meanwhile, you got to get the bitch motherfucking down the line, and you be like, yeah, baby, let's, you know what, let's get some real estate or something. You know what I'm saying? Let's do something. Let me put some assets in your name, and she she's sitting there with a pretty face, uh, uh, 
body full of designer eyelashes on on fleek with the the mink joints. But guess what? Her credit, this shit is in the garbage can. And not at the top of the garbage can where you can dust it off and hold on, let me wipe this burger. Maybe I can eat it. Her shit is in the bottom of the trash with the juice on it. It's it's un it's un uh salvageable. It's a fact. Because of bum ass niggas. Really despise bum ass nigga. If you fell away, then use a bum ass nigga. And you only got listen, you only gonna motiv- get be motivated or you're gonna hate it. When you when you're dealing with me. Like, you know where you stand with me. That's a fact though. So anyway, um the guy gets in the argument with his girlfriend or whatever, she throws him out. And she's a cold motherfucker. She say, You get the fuck out of my house and take your son the fuck out of my house. And what's she wrong? Huh? Can't tell someone how to feel or react. You can't. No, so I've not have not have done that. But then uh, again, you know, I'm not getting kicked out of shit because I got my own. Period. You feel me? I'm not laying up in nobody. No, nah, we ain't gonna do that. It's a fact. That's what. That's to me is what. That's what quote unquote a real nigga is or a real man. I don't even want to be a real nigga. I want to be a real man. Real man got his own. Take care of his own responsibilities. So you're not getting kicked the fuck out and not putting a burden on your kid's mother because she got to come pick up your son four hours uh, down the highway uh, because you got kicked out by some bitch that you was leeching off of. Bum-ass niggas, man. I've had it. I've had it up the hill with bum-ass niggas for quite some time now, I swear. Um, So I just want to tell everybody and stress the fact of always having your own. The least amount of people that you depend on, the better in life when it comes to anything. But if I'm lying, let me know. You feel me? Josh, right along. Look, you got your own shit. You feel me? I got a call about you kicking somebody out the crib. That's another story. You know what I'm saying? Um, always have your own. You can't do. You can't do. I, I've seen men be like, "Yo, damn, yo, how you talking to me like that?" Or, "Yo, or, or I've heard secrets about people saying somebody's talking to them like a bitch and." Disrespecting them and, and basically that's that's A lot of these niggas They had their hand in their chest out So the main thing with them Be like Yo you talking to me like a bitch Yo Like nigga if you Act like a bitch I'm gonna treat you like a bitch You feel me And anybody else has the right to If we go out And the bill comes And you ain't reaching in your pocket To pay for your share Like a real man Then you know I feel like I'm on a date With a chick You feel me So nigga liable to say anything that's a fact. I'm dominant when it comes to relationships. I'm dominant, and I feel like real women like a dominant male. They don't like all that other soft shit. I know because the uh women that I be, you know, that I'm friends with, they be cheating on their boyfriends with dominant males. You feel me? So, is I'm saying this to you. If you're listening to the sound of my voice, man up, man up. Period. It's about time, dog. It's about time. Doing too many. Doing too much sucky shit, man. Out here, you know, if y'all notice, I don't even be disrespecting. Um, I don't disrespect nobody unless, you know, they initiated some disrespect with me. Then I'm going to I'm gonna disrespect your ass tenfold. But all of this feminine male man shit, acting like chicks, all this TikToking and all this shit, you know what I'm saying? And that got to come to a stop. They got to come to a stop. And... We can't control what everybody else do, but we can control what we do in our community. And then hopefully that has a domino effect. You feel me? Because we want to raise our boys to be men and not, um, not, what's, what's the, what's the proper word for them? Fucking peons that get kicked out of the house at 2 a.m. and be standing around with your kid, not knowing where to go, bum ass niggas, zero credit score. Can't even get a hotel because you don't have a credit card, only a fucking debit card. This shit is disgusting, man. Shit is disgusting. All right. Uh, I, I know I went to get into some personal shit, but I had to talk about that first. Um, The personal shit that I want to talk about, I'm going to get into it right after we shoot to this quick commercial. It's going to be very quick. I'm trying to run through this fact of show today. I did this to y'all because I'm keeping my word. And, you know, I'm here. I'm here. Tune in with your boy. What up, what up, y'all? This the Fact Those Show. Um, this episode is brought to you by God is Great Paper Straight. Stay fresh and stay blessed in that GIGPS. And of course, y'all, we got some new, we got some new stuff for y'all. We got the Almighty brand. Uh, 
amazing, you know what I'm saying? It's hoodie season, so make sure you grab up, grip up, get what you need to get. And then, you know, we got the, uh, the Allah's great paper straight joints out here. That's what, you know, we're an inclusive community. We're not the divisive. We don't want to divide. We want our people to come together. So I don't care how you believe in God. As long as you believe in God, you're good. I learned something that was called the, the uh, Treaty of Nicaea or whatever. I'm probably saying it wrong, but y'all can say it. And um, where they had Constantine or somebody like that, they, they went and had a meeting and they took everybody who was of different uh, religions and they said, well, all right, what's the base? We all believe in God? Cool. But I said all that to say, make sure you support the brand and you know you can't have money if you don't save money and we like to promote saving money. So use the code, the facto show to get 20% off. God is great. Paper straight. Appreciate y'all love. Okay, and your boy is back. I never really left nowhere. I'm sitting here on this comfy ass sofa in these comfy ass slippers. You know what I'm saying? I got Versace slippers on for anybody who can't see. Got, got some motherfucking Versace's on, you know what I mean? Got some Versace pants on. Um, these really my, my pool shoes. Versace sweats on. Um, I got the GIGPS Almighty. Um, Hoodie on, it's very self, very comfortable, man. Very self comfortable. Um, you know, I'm just in the vibe. I'm just chilling out. That's it. But moving right along, we was talking about pride, pride, personal stories. I feel like more. I just want to kick it with y'all. I want to talk to the people. I took my kid to the um, I took my my five year old son. I took him to the nail salon. You know because. Like I'm, you gotta really when you have children, you're obligated to raise them up the right way, not just raise them up. How you like? I feel honestly, if my kid grows up and they get in a gang or something, I feel like I failed as a father, and you should too. It's not what we promote. We know better now. You feel me? So you're never gonna see me with my kids holding up rags, throwing up gangs. Hey, I'm not with none of that. You know what I'm saying? To each his own. But I'm not with none of that. I'm trying to raise productive, productive men. So along with that comes. You know, cleanliness, knowing how to do shit. I teach my kids, they four and five. When they was three and four, I've been teaching them how to clean the bathroom. If you know how to piss all over the toilet, then you know how to, uh, here, take a little, uh, paper towel, you spray it with some, uh, a little bit of, um, what you call it, Comet or, or Tilex. And, you know, you'll be surprised how much, how much men don't know how to clean and cook or clean thoroughly. Like, everybody knows, not everybody, I know, I know, growing up. When you got to really clean the toilet, like you got to pick up all three parts of the seat. You got to hit the, the back part, you know, where the, the two things are that always break. And then more importantly, for some reason, I don't know why, but right down there in the back on the side of, sides of the toilet bowl right there is always some piss on there, dog. I don't know why. Ladies, if you're listening, I know y'all probably clean up more than us. So, you know, I don't know why it's always some piss over there for some reason. But anyway, I said that to say that I'm teaching my kids differently. I feel like it's my it's my obligation. I want them to be self sufficient. I want I want to make sure that that they're the catch and not the one out here trying to catch something. You feel me? Like I don't, I don't want you can't never be out here trying to rely on. Oh man, I gotta I gotta get me this chick because she got this and she got that. Nah, nigga, you need to have everything yourself, and then they'll come to get you. Straight up, you gotta be self sufficient. That's a word. If it is, whatever. So, um, I took my kids to the nail salon, and um, I was like, "Hey, y'all can get manicure, pedicure." You know, what I'm saying this is things that you know you, a lot of men might not learn till earlier. But you know, you gotta have got your shit together. You don't want to be the nigga with the dirty ass nails, and you trying to touch a chick, and she like, "Oh, get away from me with your dirty nails. You're nasty. You're disgusting. Yuck. You're a pig. Ugh. Clean up." Dirty nigga buy from where all type of shit girls say, you know what I'm saying? So these these are the type of things I'm 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 teaching them like, you know what I mean? Cleanliness is next to godliness, whatever, whatever. So we in there, my son falls asleep, messing around. I this this wasn't this was just a part of the story. Fast forward to the good part. So I'm on the way out, they only take cash or whatever. So I was in New York. We went to the joint in New York. So since it been COVID and all that, um, I ain't really been carrying my cash 
on me. Like, you know, every now and then I might get cash and do something. I'm like a, I take the cash and I throw it in the bank, baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's the type of time I've been on lately. It don't make no sense. Like, what am I doing? Just collecting mad cash. So anyway, all they took was, um, was, was cash. So I was like, all right, me, you know, I'm, ve I'm very responsible when it comes to this money. They had an ATM machine there, but I get to thinking, uh, they probably got a $5 service fee and they probably got a bank fee. Uh, I'm only taking out, it's only like a hundred dollars with all of us. Uh, do I want to pay and do I want to pay that much? Or, let me just run the chase right down the block. Got all this money, I pay insurance on this exotic foreign. Let's hop in that and screw, screw down the block. You know what I'm saying? You got to make it work. So I said, I'll be back. Go down the block, a couple minutes away. When I come back, um, I pay the people. And then um, hit the moral of my story. I see a guy doing ATMs. Young dude, he looked like around my age. Might have been black or Spanish. And he taking the money out the ATM. He, Closing the machine, locking it, then he break out, and um, you know, he like give me a head nod. I'm like, ah, right, what's up? And then he skirt off, boom. No, no, I'm cap. I leave. I'm walking by with my kids. I leave. We jump back in the V. Um, so now I'm thinking in my head. I'm like, damn, what the fuck? This nigga was just doing eighteen. What was he? I got all kind of questions. Was he? Was he the one doing it? Was he work for somebody? What? And Long story long, I say to myself, man, I should ask him what's up. Because a lot of y'all, I don't know if you know or not, but ATM, vending machines, those are all big business. Those are all big business that get you residual income. Residual income is money that you make without having to physically be there. You can make that in your sleep. You feel me? So I'm sitting there looking at it, and then he jumped in the V, I jump in the V, and then I'm driving, and then it's like he was waiting to say what up one more time. And then for some reason, I don't know, it, I, I want to say it was just pride. It was nothing but but foolish fucking male pride. And I didn't ask his brother, like, what's up, my nigga? How you getting to the money? What's going on with it? You feel me? And um, I think that was wrong. I've been trying. It's a constant battle. I try not to let my pride get in the way of of anything. I try to think with my head, not with my heart. A lot of times, pride comes from your heart and your feelings. And you ain't fuck all that feeling. Can't get no money with feelings like that. You feel me? So, I said all I like to say. I got to cut my real ones and ask y'all if anybody know about any ATM businesses or y'all want to invest and put some ATMs or vending machines in places, holla at your boy. I'm definitely interested. I want people, if y'all got any business ideas, because I like, I like to get to the money. If y'all got any business ideas, you can DM me um, on at Troy Ave on Instagram. You can hit me right here. On the fact of show, I probably won't be in the comments that much. But just come to me because that's something that I want to get into. We could go half. We could get some money together. We could flourish. That's a fact, though. That's what I was going to say the whole time. Right? That's That was good. I had to get that off my chest. I don't just want to come on here and talk about what's going on in the news and that and that's it type shit. You feel me? If that's the case, I just promote. Troy Ave Volume 2, the new album out right now. If you're listening to this on Spotify... YouTube, Apple Music, go download Choi Ave Volume 2. And that Love Story video is fire. I hope y'all got the message in that. It's a message I put in there, a secret message in the Love Story song. All right, we good. Moving right along. Speaking of um, getting to the money, um, Johnson & Johnson, the people with baby powder, you know, the, the powder that you put so you don't get the diaper rash. Or Sometimes I'm from the hood, so even still to this day, when I take a shower, I might hit the nutsack, boom, 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 with a little powder. I might hit my back, boom, 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 with a little powder. I might hit my chest, boom, 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 with a little powder. You know what I'm saying? If I don't want to, if I, if I jump out of the shower and I'm like, ah, uh, it's not a deodorant type of day, I might hit me with a little powder because I'm not one of these stink people that be sweating a lot. So I could go through the day with just some powder on the pits. You know what I mean? So Johnson & Johnson, they, it's kind of disgusting when you, when you got deodorant and then, you cake it up and then it's like it never really washes off well in the shower if you got some hair under your own piss like a man you know what I'm saying I'm, I ain't feeling it so I like to hit the powder every now and then Johnson and Johnson powder we not talking about drugs y'all no we in a junkie society junkie Joe you fucking uh, a dog molesting molesting 
uh, animal bestiality participating ass nigga. Anyway, Johnson and Johnson come to find out it's all the secret shit that be going on. They a, a part of them or part of their uh their company their franchise uh secretly uh f- fueled the opioid addiction. Um, how did they do that? You asked. They ran ads. They ran ads. They ran ads. Commercial ads. So apparently they were in uh business with a company that produces the opioids. And and now I don't know if y'all know, but New York State they going after all the people that's um was promoting and has something to do with this because at the end of the day, not only does it have mad people junkied out and on drugs, and you don't gotta just be on heroin to be a junkie. Niggas be on pills hard. Facts. That's how it starts. So you think it's cool? You, me pop a uh a Vicodin and and what what's Percocets and all that? Then hey, you niggas be fucking junkies. Straight up, it go from that to I can't get that no more. To now you scratching and now you just trying to uh uh take some dope to get the edge off because it's cheaper. It's ten dollars. Yeah, disgusting. So. Apparently, a judge in Oklahoma smoked them, and they was ordered to pay $500 million. I only came across this because, like I said, I don't want to just bring y'all ghetto news and shit. So he, he smoked them and said they got to pay $500 million because of their, they were in cahoots with an opioid company that was producing pills and, you know, just to promote it so that they could get, all, get more money. But now New York is suing them for $2, $2 billion. Now, my question is, what type of money you got to be getting for somebody to sue you for $2 billion? That's nuts to me, in my opinion. Off powder? Nigga, please, man. Listen. Anyway, moving right along. Speaking of people getting to the to the, to the the money. um, And speaking of people getting to the money. In Beverly Hills, the police, they arrested 44 people. And, uh... It's still about two point five million dollars. They no matter of fact, they recovered two point five million dollars on no other than EDD cards. They had the EDD debit cards, man. Caught about one hundred twenty nine of them. And what was on it? Two point five million dollars cash, free government money. Snakes were scamming. I'm gonna let y'all guess the let y'all get guess the races and ethnicities of these people. Um, let me tell you what they spent their money on to see if y'all could guess. Turns out they spent their money on dining out. Spent their money on um uh, uh fancy clothes. Uh spent their money on expensive quote unquote merchandise. And here's the kicker. They spent their money renting high end short stay properties. So I'll just let that set in. Y'all can figure out. Let's play Guess That Race. You know what I'm saying? Uh, nevertheless, to everybody, if you listen to the sound of my voice and you're doing some EDD scam, you're trying to get over on the government, listen, man, do not be a fucking dummy. If you got over, be done, be cool, that's it, you're done. You got to chill out. It's never no, it's the lower average. The more you keep doing something, the more, uh, the more times... That is likely for something to go wrong. Trust me, the government always tries to come back and win and get their money at the end. It might be it might be ten years down the line. You think you winning, yeah, I'm doing my thing, and then boom, you get smoked. They they take your whole fucking income tax that you was depending on. You feel me? So my advice to y'all is if you could get it the legal way without having to involve the government, the fraud way, the scam way, just do that. Just do that, please. I'm 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 telling you. Don't say I never try to help you out. Don't come to me and ask me for shit. Cause I'm you know I'm quick with the nose. I'll check my pockets and say, Yeah, partner, um, I got no fucks to give. Straight up. So I'm the type of person that not and I can't stand when people do this. If, if I tell you how to avoid something, don't come to me after you didn't listen with help for that problem. I got no fucking help for you. Fact though. You know who got help for you? Pine soul. This is a fact. One of my favorite aromas, Ponsol. It, it comes out that this shit can cure um, a coronavirus. It can't cure it, but it can clean it up. On the surface, it cleans it up or whatever. So you can hit the Ponsol, you mop your whole house, house smelling good, and then you ain't got to worry about no uh, corona. I'm the type of person that I make people take shoes off in my house, but I got marble floors and shit, so it's a little different. You know what I mean? But 
You don't want somebody coming in there. You might have been walking along. You didn't stepped on some gum that somebody chewed. You feel me? Now it's on on your floor, on your carpet, or even worse, it got the corona. Then you go walking in your socks. Then you go jumping in your bed. You know what I'm saying? Depending on how you laying, you might have a pillow, or whatever. Like you might anything could happen. Next thing you know, you go lay on the edge of the bed. Now your face is on somebody hog spit fucking a uh, a uh, uh, juicy fruit. Now you got the juicy corona all in your face. Shit is nuts and disgusting, man. Shoot to a commercial real quick. I'm coming right back. We gonna talk some shit. All right, all right, y'all. Welcome to the Facto Show. This episode right here. I think this is episode 22. I think this one is brought to you by BSB Records. BSB Records is the number one independent label on the East Coast. You hear all these fucking artists complaining. They say, oh, they broke. These labels are fucking me over. Um, I'm broke. Uh, yeah, and they own my publishing. I didn't tell these people, man. I'm self made, not man made. That's a fact, though. We're giving out distribution deals. So if you're an artist that have your own bread, you got work ethic, and you loyal, hit us. The number's right here below. And make sure that y'all go get that Troy Ave Volume 2. I don't even want to tell you it's fire. Just go support the brand. You heard? We're back. And we're back. Okay. And we're back. I was just talking. I touched on it before real quick about all these artists out here uh, talking about Universal and all these companies won't let them out of their, their shit. Oh, what type of fucking bum shit is it? Hey, listen. You can't. I remember they laughed at me. They laughed at me. I sold. Uh, 14,000 records in my first week They laughed at me Act like it was an L They tried to say I sold 4,000 But they only counted uh, Two days Instead of Seven But whatever They laughed at me And all kind of shit Now The chickens come home to roost All you niggas be desperate And I don't want to hear nobody Rapping about no gangster shit Getting money If you go and you sign a slave deal Period you, You're not a gangster You're not getting Gangsters ain't slaves You feel me? Like, you can look at these people and their actions. You can look at it. I don't want to hear no tough shit. I don't want to hear no, no boss shit. None of that. You're a bum. You're not a boss. You was on your knees, and now you got some new clothes, and now you got a little bit of new money, and now you forgot where you came from and who you are. Any artist is like, oh, let me out my deal crying. Get the fuck out of here. He's a bum. Straight up. Keep it independent, baby. Self-made and self-paid. So, anyway, with... Uh, Josh, that's what I was talking about. I was trying to figure out that part. Yeah, don't don't worry about it. Oh, uh, you want me to move on to some of this news? It's the it's it's like a a fucking perv from some show. Um, Cheers. He's a cheerleading. He was molesting boys apparently, underage people on some alleged Charlemagne the God type of vibes. But it was boys. It wasn't it wasn't girls. It wasn't fifteen year old girls. It was yeah, little boy. I mean. What, I never watched Cherry, and I don't think no no man has. No, not no real man. I don't know. I never watched it. It's cause some cheerleading shit on Netflix, apparently. And he's asking boys to send his dick pics, and he wanted to send booty pics. What type of fucking shit is that? See, man, you niggas, man. They, they, they didn't put Old Country Road in number one, and now it's a shit show. It's a shit show. I blame you. I blame you. I blame you, man. It's all fucked up now. Get off of that shit I don't even care Um What else Cardi B files for divorce With Offset Alright It's not a Fucking shock Like Man you know how She from New York You feel me He from the south Um I never really see New York and south Girl like In the history It don't really be working out Unless they just let The New York chicks run shit Cause you know New York chicks, they ain't about to go for nothing. When they go, when they go get a guy that's not from New York, they want, they want southern hospitality, gentlemen, let them do whatever. It's like if a black chick go get a white dude, she's not gonna put up with the all the fucking hood shit, street shit. What? Man, you better marry me. Fuck you mean having a baby out of wedlock? What? Fuck you mean? You feel me? So I don't know. That's it's really they business. On oh, I wish Cardi be the, the best. Fucks with Barty, man. You know what I'm saying? She dope. She cool chick. She got dope personality. Like, in real life, she's, like, dope. So I don't I don't really have nothing to say with that. What else? Some chump shit. I don't even want to talk about this shit no more, bro. Yo, like, honestly, when niggas start giving me some fucking news that I don't want to talk about, I'm just going to say, nah, I'm not talking about that. 
Not on this facto show. Y'all come here for a peace of mind. That's it. Peace of mind. We just want to vibe. We want to talk about shit that we're interested in. We don't want to be all turned to a fucking gossip site. I give my opinion on some shit, but when it start getting too deep, like, oh, I don't even care about that, then I just don't care. Fact, though. Um, I'm up out of here. It's Friday. Everybody enjoy yourself or the mother. Um, Be safe out here. Um, We going to come back with another episode. I'm going to drop that for y'all Tuesday. I'm gonna just We just going to bomb. I ain't going to play. Um, I want everybody to stay blessed, stay fresh, stay safe out here. I'm going to leave you with these words. Never, ever, ever accept criticism from people that you wouldn't accept advice from. That's a fact. Haters going to hate and come for our head. No matter how they try to flip it, my life is like a sandwich. You see the bread? I'm Troy Ave. This is the fact, though. Show don't be a bum. Go pay your child support. Ladies, don't fuck with no bum-ass niggas. Cut them off. Right at the head Boop, gotta go Goodbye Don't let nobody stay in your house Don't let nobody stay on your couch Feel me? Or the mother Anti-leech Anti-deadbeat I'm Troy Abbott the fact that show We out And y'all real quick Make sure you hit that subscribe button In the bottom right hand corner But not only that Click the bell The bell gonna give you the notification to keep you in tune with everything we got going. She dope boy Troy have love.